Good day, Titan Tal here, and today I wanted to share great news from GGG about the next 3.16 Scourge patch. They basically buffed most of the totem builds by making all totems more than 2 times tankier. The main reason for these changes is to nerf Forbidden Right totems, because it was too efficient to scale damage with totem life. So what they did is they reduced total life of all totems by 60%, but made it so they take 80% less damage from enemies. And that results in most totems being twice as tanky now. This can be shown on a simple example here. Let's say a skill level 20 totem in previous patch had 5000 life. With 60% reduced life in Scourge Lake, it's gonna be 2000 life now. But in order to kill this totem, enemies will need to do 10,000 damage. And that's the value after applying all other damage mitigation mechanics. So totems went from having 5000 life to 10,000 effective life against enemies. And honestly, this is the best buff the totem builds could receive, because the biggest issue, in my opinion, always was totem survivability. Especially in league mechanics like Ultimatum or Ritual, where enemies can spawn right on top of totems, so if your totems can't freeze or knock back, they would die too fast. Obviously, builds that scale damage based on totem life get damage nerf, so for being right totems, righteous fire totems, and dark pack totems, the non scaled item version, but all other totem builds get suited DPS increase because since you will resummon totems less often, they can do damage longer without stopping. Another consequence of totem life change is their effective life regen boost. I recommend from now on always have vitality or in every totem build. Think about it, with level 20 vitality, totems in radius of the aura will get almost 200 flat life regen per second, and this will result in thousands effective life regeneration. Because when enemies hit a totem for 1000 damage, totem will only receive 200 damage, which will be regenerated over 1 second with the aura. And if 1000 damage is regenerated over 1 second, this is exactly 1000 effective life regen. So all sources of flat life regen for totems effectively get multiplied by 5. What about percentage life regeneration? Let's get back to our example with changes to totem life. Let's assume that totem has 10% life regenerated per second. Previously, it would result in 500 life regeneration. New totem will regenerate 200 life. But we already know that this is effectively 1000 life regeneration considering damage reduction. So in this example, totem went from 500 life regen to 1000. That means that all sources of percentage totem life regeneration in Scourge Lake become twice as effective, just like totem effective HP. This change also affects one of the best defensive totem setups, Divergent Decoy Totems. There is an alternate quality for Decoy Totem skill, which gives this totem 1% life regen per quality. With 20% quality, it's 20% life regeneration. If you link it to level 4 enhanced support, it's gonna be 44% life regeneration. And considering that effectively totem's percentage life regen gets doubled in Scourge Lake, that's the same as 88% totem life regen before 3.16 patch. Recommended following for this setup is Divergent Decoy Totem, Multiple Totem Support, Second Wind, and Enhanced Support. With this, you will summon two Decoy Totems at a time, which will be even tankier than before and will regenerate life very fast after taking damage. This is obviously not for solo self-found leaks, because it's pretty hard to find the exact alternate quality gem that you need, and the drop rate of Enhanced Support also gets significantly lowered. But in Trade League, especially in Hardcore, it seems very useful. And another really interesting addition to totem builds in Scourge comes from Totem Masteries on Passive Tree. This 5% of damage from hits is taken from your nearest totem's life before you passive, basically is 5% less damage taken from hits for all totem builds. Because it seems that the range is unlimited on this mastery, and as a totem build you always have active totems, so this mastery will always be active. This partially makes up for the loss of 45 on totem builds. With the Cecil Bond Keystone, it's gonna be impossible to get fortification charges now, but with buffs to other defensive mechanics and flasks, and this totem mastery, I feel like the place of ability on totem builds will remain the same. Another mastery that caught my attention is totems taunt enemies around them for 1 second when summoned. We don't know the radius of this taunt yet, but if it's gonna be decent, then I was thinking of changing the double decoy totem setup that I use on almost every build for a double rejuvenation totem. Rejuve Totems have another flat life regen aura that is slightly less effective than Vitality, but again, since all sources of flat life regen for Totems are 5 times more effective now, it seems like a good replacement. Plus, Rejuvenation Totems don't have cooldown like Decoy Totems, and you don't need to support them with Second Wind in order to summon 2 Totems at a time. And the last buff for many Totem builds is Soul Mantle. It's even easier now to get 100% curse effectiveness reduction. For example, on passive tree, we have this Asylum cluster that gives 30%, 
Then Resistance and Ailment Protection Mastery gives another 20%, and this Armor and Energy Shield Mastery also gives 20% reduction. Then we just add 30% on top of it from Small Pentium Power, Soul of Yugil, and now we have a total of 100% Curse Reduction from 7 Passives on 3, and Small Pentium Power. It's very SSF friendly, because the only unique required for that is Soul Mantle itself. Another cheap and easy option is to use buffed Kikazaro Ring. Now with Imbued Catalyst, it gives 72% Curse Reduction, plus the same Soul of Yugil, we get our 100% Curse Reduction again. And there are other extra sources of that stat too. So here's the list of totem changes we talked about today. First, and the most important one, totem's effective HP got doubled. As a result of that, all sources of percentage life regeneration for totems are also doubled. All sources of flat life regeneration are now 5 times more effective for totems, so Vitality Aura is highly recommended on totem builds. Diversion Decoy totems falling looks even better now. Some totem builds lost Fortify, but at least we have 5% less damage taken from hits on totem mastery now for all totem builds. And Taunt totem mastery looks interesting, and if it has a good enough radius, Swapping Decoy Totems for Rejuvenation Totems seems like a good option. Getting 100% Curse Effectiveness Reduction is even easier now for Soul Mantle, which is much more solo cell phone friendly since you don't have to farm Influence Rings or Viridus Veil Helmets. Overall, I'm really happy with these changes because Totem Survivability was the biggest issue before and now they doubled it. As always, I'm gonna play different Totem builds in Scourge SSF HC League. And while preparing for the lake, I made this spreadsheet with different totem builds PUBs. So if you want to check them out, the link is in description. Again, these builds are for lake starting and soul cell found hardcore, so I don't use any cluster jewels and uniques like soul mantle in them. And the builds are more defense oriented. And that's it for today, I'm Tadian Tell and try to die less than your totems do.